Hi, in this video I will explain to you what the p-value is and how to interpret it. If you like, you can find the content of this video in our book, Statistics Made Easy. In order to understand the p-value, let's have a look at this example. Let's say we have two factories producing phone batteries, factory A and factory B. Now we want to know, is there a difference in battery life between batteries produced in factory A and factory B? Let's say we measure battery life as the time from a full charge until the battery is empty. So if we have several batteries and we measure their battery life, we get values like 23 hours, 25 hours and so on. Okay, but this video is about the p-value. In order to understand the p-value, we first need the null hypothesis. But what is the null hypothesis? Well, the null hypothesis states that there is no real effect or difference. In our example, that means factory A and factory B produce batteries with the same average battery life. Therefore, our null hypothesis is both factories produce batteries with the same average battery life. But how can we test this hypothesis? Of course, we can't measure the battery life of all produced batteries, so we take a sample from factory A and a sample from factory B. Now we can measure the battery life of the sampled batteries. And keep in mind that we assume that both factories produce batteries with the same average battery life, which is our null hypothesis. But of course, even if there is no true difference between the two factories, it's unlikely that we draw two samples which have exactly the same average battery life. Purely by chance, one sample will likely last a bit longer than the other one. For example, the difference between the two samples averages might be 13 minutes. And now we can understand the p-value. So from a population where we assume no real difference, we draw two samples that differ by 13 minutes. Now we can ask how likely it is to take a sample that differs by 13 minutes or more. Or if we draw a sample which differs 22 minutes, we can ask how likely it is to get samples that differ by 22 minutes or more. For example, it could be that it is 64% likely to draw samples which differ 13 minutes or more. Or it could be that it is 26% likely to draw samples which differ 22 minutes or more. And that is exactly what the p-value tells us. So the p-value tells us how likely it is to draw samples that differ as much as ours or more if there is truly no difference. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's say we calculate the p-value for an observed difference of 43 minutes and obtain a p-value of 0.04. What does the p-value of 0.04 mean? If the null hypothesis is true, there is a 4% chance of observing a result at least as extreme as the one we saw purely by random sampling. Okay, but at the end of the day, we don't just want the p-value. We want to know whether we reject or do not reject the null hypothesis. So how do we do that? If the p-value is very small, so it's quite unlikely to see the specific result or a more extreme one, we can say, hold on. This outcome is so unlikely under the null hypothesis that maybe the null hypothesis is false and we start to doubt the null hypothesis. But at what point is the p-value small enough to doubt the null hypothesis? Or in other words, at what point is the p-value small enough to reject the null hypothesis? This is determined by the significance level, which is typically set to 
So if the calculated p-value is less than 5%, we say, well, the probability of seeing data this extreme or more extreme is under 5% and therefore we reject the null hypothesis. But here is a really important thing and I think it's the most confusing thing about the p-value. A small p-value doesn't mean the null hypothesis is false. Our null hypothesis is both factories produce batteries with the same average life, so there is no difference between the factories. And a small p-value doesn't prove that this null hypothesis is false. It only says the observed result or more is unlikely if the null was true. So if there really is no difference, it's very unlikely we'd see a result this large or a more extreme one. If we reject the null hypothesis at a 5% significance level, we accept a 5% chance of making an error. So if the null hypothesis is true and we repeat the experiment many times, we'll get slightly different results each time. And on average, with a 5% significance level, about 5% of the studies will reject the null by chance. Okay, but why 5%? To ensure a certain degree of comparability, the significance level is usually set at 5 or 1%. A p-value of less than 1% is considered highly significant. A p-value of less than 5% is called significant and a p-value greater than 5% is called not significant. And this is very important. The significance level is always determined before your study and it cannot be changed afterwards in order to finally obtain the desired results. Okay, we've talked about p-values, but how do we compute them? We get a p-value by running a hypothesis test, for example, a t-test. And you'll learn all about the t-test in my next video. I'm Hannah and I'll see you in the next one.